This is the discussion about an abstract that was published in ASCO 2010. The name of the abstract is Hormonal Manipulation of Prostate Cancer with Sequential Androgen Blockade. This was in the Journal of Clinical Oncology 28, 2010, the supplement, and you have the number here. The authors are all from the University of Michigan. The name you all recognize is uh, Kenneth J. Pienta, who is a very well-known researcher in the field of prostate cancer. Let's go now and review the abstract itself. The background. The treatment of biochemical recurrent prostate cancer continues to be controversial. We are all aware about the question when the PSA is rising after radical prostatectomy or radiation. We all try to find where is the cancer coming from. Uh, the two main treatments are radiation to the prostatic bed or systemic hormonal blockade, although we have to add nowadays that perhaps we should go after lymph nodes as we find them present on some sophisticated imaging. In any case, the suggestion of using sequential hormonal blockade is not instead of doing the same sophisticated imaging test to try to find where is the cancer. On the contrary, they could be used as a tool to monitor the response to such a minimal approach of sequential hormonal blockade. So when I say minimum intervention, i.e the sequential hormonal blockade, I also advocate the maximum surveillance by doing the PET scans or the DWI MRIs or contrast enhanced MRIs. This is not instead, but this imaging will be as a benchmark and monitoring findings to try to see what's going on to the patient on this treatment because I always advocate to look not only at the PSA but what's happening to the cancer. So let's go now to the study itself. They mention here that while androgen deprivation therapy with LHRH agonist is the current standard care, it's associated with growing list of potential toxicities. And we are all aware of those toxicities, the effect on the bone, on the muscle, on the hemoglobin, on sexual drive, on memory, uh, everything that relates to the function of testosterone in the body if you take the testosterone away, it will affect it. Basically, what's being advocated is sequential androgen blockade with 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and non-steroidal anti-androgen. They are active only on prostate cancer cells. So we could see here that it ha this type of an approach has been shown to decrease PSA and delay disease progression in patients with biochemical recurrence. Many people feel that any hormonal blockade just delays the need to be treated later on, but some of the patients do not need any treatment at all, and maybe giving them less aggressive treatment only by Casodex, they may go for many years. In my case, in my practice, there were some patients more than 10 years that never, treated, never needed any other further treatment besides the occasional Casodex, that they even could go on and off this minimal intervention. Let's go now to the methods of the study. They perform a retrospective review of 61 prostate cancer patients. They were treated in single institution with combination of oral finasteride, which is Proscar, and baclutamide 50 milligram. And this was done daily dose. I must stress the fact that in my approach, I'm tapering down once we see that this regimen really works for the patient and the imaging or the markers do not show any problem, we could taper the dose even to a lower dose to avoid the side effect of being on Casodex and there's the breast tenderness and enlargement and by giving smaller doses we avoid the need to treat this complication of breast enlargement to avoid the radiation or to avoid other medication that we need to take it long term. So there were 22 patients treated with continuous sequence androgen blockade. There were 39 that were treated intermittently based on PSA. 55 patients had a rising PSA after definitive treatment. Six patients had no local definitive treatment. These were patients that were 
primary treatment for the prostate cancer disease. In addition to local treatment, over 50% had received other treatment for the prostate cancer. 24 had received LHRH agonies before the sequential androgen blockade. 13 had prior chemotherapy and 4 even had a vaccine, were on vaccine trials. 14 patients had evidence of metastatic disease prior to initiation of sequential androgen blockade. And I mentioned it previously in this presentation that it may be working very well even on patients that have metastatic prostate cancer. And here is the breakdown of the metastatic disease. Four had lymphadenopathy, seven had bone metastasis, two had nodal and bone disease, one with lung metastasis. So let's go now to the results. The results, excluding five patients with undetectable PSA at the time of the sequential androgen blockade. So there were patients that had non-detected PSA and they elected to take this minimal approach and maybe they were in a higher risk and they decided to start the sequence androgen blockade even without rising PSA. The median PSA decline in three months was quite dramatic, was 90% decline with a median follow-up of 44 months. And we see the range here up to 149. Median duration of response was 72.5 months. Response was noted across all glycine score with median duration in, and let me show you the breakdown according to the glycine. So the glycine score with median duration in glycine 7, 8, and 9 was 72 and a half months for the glycine 7. 72.5 months in glycine 8 and 82.3 months with glycine 9. Currently, 35 patients remain on the sequential androgen blockade at the time of the presentation with median follow-up of 29 months. 21 patients treated with sequential androgen blockade were later treated with LHRH analog. And I want to tell you that actually some other studies showed that just because you were on the sequential androgen blockade and you needed to be on Lupron later, there was no problem to be on Lupron later. Patients still responded well to this combination. Conclusions. In this heterogeneous group of prostate cancer patients, as I mentioned, there were patients after failure of treatment. There were even six patients that were used it as a primary treatment. There were patients that used it even when the PSA was not rising after primary treatment, and there were patients also with metastatic disease either in the lymph node or in the bone, or even one patient in the lung. So in this group, sequential androgen blockade was well tolerated with median duration of biochemical control of just over six years. Our observation suggests that further study of this combination in randomized trial may be warranted. And here I come back to the point about randomized studies. I think that each individual patient with each individual doctor looking very carefully at the individual information that the patient presents with the individual markers, the patient individual imaging, and let's not forget the patient individual preferences, there is a place to try and test the ability of Casodex only, as I say, start with the minimum aggressive treatment, monitor it very carefully, you always have time, especially with a slow growing prostate cancer, you always have time to move on to a more aggressive treatment. But this way, the patient who is really interested in quality of life could try and use this mode of minimal intervention. Let's go now to a lecture I gave a few years ago that gives a broader explanation about this approach. And again, I want to stress, this is not a standard treatment and this should be discussed between the doctor and the patient, or as I like to say, between the patient and the doctor, because the patient is the boss, and the doctor has to take into account patient wishes, and also look a bit at the literature, because somehow some of the doctors did not come across those studies, and that's why I bring these video blogs. Perhaps some patient could share it with their own physicians. Thank you for listening. The next video about Casodex and Proscar only will be presented in a different video blog. 
For more information, you could call our foundation at 1-619-906-4700 or write to info at pcref.org. Thank you. I hope you'll join me on Ask Dr. Bark and Colin show the audio portion on Tuesday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. The number to call is 1-877-727-727. 3301. Thank you. Goodbye.